The last 10 years of managing environment in Uganda have been synonymous with the name Dr. Tom Okurut. He formerly worked as the Executive Secretary, Lake Victoria Commission. What I observed here is that the water levels have also increased here. It is this experience and expertise that he opted to bring back home as the Executive Director National Environment Management Authority, NEMA. So that's where I came from, Lake Victoria Basin, five years as Executive Secretary, and uh, it was quite an interesting job. Passionate about environment, Dr. Okurut is a scientist by calling, a chemist by training, and an environmentalist by purpose. Born in Kumi district to Jacob Okia, and Edith Akurut. Dr. Okurut Tom Okia is a product of Tesosa region. He attended Akadot and Apopong primary schools in Parisa district, from where he studied and completed his primary education. This was before he joined Guru High School for his O level and later Teso College Alloyed for his A level. Uh, President of McKenna. University, where I did a degree in chemistry, major in chemistry. Of course, I did mathematics and others before. Upon completion of his bachelor's degree in chemistry at Makerere University, he was retained as a teaching assistant. He would later join the University of Ibadan in Nigeria for masters in physical chemistry. So most of, most of us from East Africa went to West Africa. The West Africans came this side. So under that exchange program, I went to University of Ibadan, Nigeria, and where I got my master's degree in physical chemistry. A good degree, a good degree at such at that time. So of course I came back to teach at McKinley. He has since established himself as an icon in environmental matters now being at the helm of NEMA. His passion for wetland restoration has earned him both friends and enemies. When I came in, two things I was confronted with. Immediately, when we said, oh, how do we deal with this? All the wetlands, most of the wetlands had the land titles on them, the ones in Kampala. So I asked the staff who were involved in them, how come? I said, land titles are there. everywhere you go. Actually, it's around Kinawataka uh, there. Quite a number of them had even been issued to the EIS. And uh, I took a decision that since the EIS were issued by my office, the first thing to do is to cancel those EIS. Extraction of sand at Luera wetland is one controversy that his leadership handled with maximum care for purposes of national development. For a long time, Luera has been... Uh, people have been extracting sand from Luera using spades. That was okay. Now, there are several projects that came into, into play. We had a government project on uh, building Karuma Dam. We have a Simba Dam. We have the Nile Bridge and those expressways that were being built. All those required high quality, high quality sun. As a field man, he loves paying attention to details. This is how rice growing was permitted at Luera Wetland in Lukaya on Massacre Road. Despite resistance from some players, the venture has paid out, employing many Ugandans and rendering the land useful. Truly, truly, those who know that place very before knew that that place was characterized by very poor soils. Actually, it had these mounds of anthills. So not actually, it wasn't 
basically it only, it only got water when there was flooding. Ordinarily it was just for grazing, cattle grazing, even that, it was just dust. Really, really, very, very poor soils. So when somebody came and said, but I can convert those poor soils into production with the rice, in fact, we said, are you sure? He said, you can. In his tenure, more awareness has been created on the use of plastic carrier bags whose effects are felt on the environment and humans. So we started a big awareness campaign on radio to get 20 people to avoid using those for cooking. Then we also collected data, Mint of Works gave us data about the difficulty in building roads where there is plastics because well, Kampala bypass there, they are, they are, they are, I think there have been a series of uh, dumping places where the road was passing. They had to keep removing all the caverna before. His journey in the environmental management has been both challenging and interesting. Even when he warned of a possibility of rising water levels way back in 2019 and was ignored, Dr. Okurut continued with the awareness creation. I never noticed that we had that uh, water just came even when there was no rain. So there's definitely a substantial amount of water that is coming out because of the flooding, uh, overall flooding in the country. His 2011 assumption of office at NEMA was clear illustration of end of the road at ESC and the beginning of the highway in Uganda. Unfortunately, he has reached the end of the highway as his tenure comes to an end this month of June, 2021. But as he exits, this is one of the things he expects his successor to look into. We have argued, but have not been very, very successful. And I think that when I hand over the new person coming, uh, that's the charge I will give him that he has to look for additional funding if we are to sustain. Because local challenges are not met by the local government because of the financial allocation. He may be on his way out, but 10 years of managing environment in Uganda, to him, is a remarkable journey. A family man, married with three children, Dr. Tom Okurut is scheduled to retreat to his farming activities. Henry Okurut, UBC.